Okay, we'll do a few more detail-y bits here. I'm going to put the ring around his eye. I'm going to use a thin brush for that. And I've got it loaded with slightly thicker black underglaze so it doesn't run when I apply that line. I don't have the brush too loaded up. Black underglaze is pretty saturated so I don't need a lot of pigment in order to make that nice and dark. Just outlining his eye there. You can see contrasted against that oxide. You don't really need a lot of underglaze to give that good contrast. It just kind of sets the colors like a little jewel. So if you do have extra money to spend on underglazes, there's these. They're Duncan Easy Strokes. I like these because they come in a variety of different colors. And if you don't feel like mixing a lot of different colors, you can just kind of grab these. <clears throat> they're a little thinner. They've got some gum in there. So they're formulated for doing um, long strokes of color, so you don't need a lot of pigments, another nice thing about them, but they also go on kind of translucent, so you don't need to water them down too much. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and layer a little in his eye there. Just like the other underglazes, you can also mix these. So if you can just afford to get a few colors, You can still play with mixing them into different colors. <clears throat> okay, so we'll let that dry. Okay, so another thing we can do is say we've got this situation here where I put this line work on here. So it's stitching for his little football helmet here, and I don't really like the blobby and unformed way that line looks. So I'm going to take a little blue underglaze and I'm going to use it kind of like correction fluid, as we used to do back in the good old days with whiteout. So you can just take that. and apply it to cover up lines. So if I don't like that line, I can just take that, layer it over it, totally erasing that line. Okay. So I can come in and just hit the parts that I want to refine a little bit. Makes the stitches look a little more integrated and intentional with the surface. But you can use this to adjust all kinds of things. Okay. So another nice thing to do with underglaze is you can give things kind of the illusion of shading if you're comfortable with painting and shading and highlights. Let's say I want the top of his helmet to be a little lighter. I can take a lighter color of blue Maybe blue and green. Okay. And 
and I can apply that to a darker color that's underneath and give that kind of the illusion of light hitting so when he's fired he looks a little bit more like a painting you can see how that nice oxide that stays in the lines there kind of keeps the marks of my gesture when I'm drawing the details on him. So things like the stitches kind of work with the surface of the fired piece. Okay, and the nice thing about doing this all before you apply any top coat of glaze on there is you can change this so many times in so many infinite ways as you fire it and go along. If you've worked any kind of printmaking technique, this will be familiar with to you as you work applying different layers to a piece. But the nice thing about this is you can take things away fire on layers, erasing everything off the bottom, which is something you don't necessarily get to do in any other medium. It makes ceramics very unique. So if I wanted to, and I hated this whole thing, I could come back with white underglaze, cover it all, fire it on there, and probably start again. If it got too thick, 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 it'd probably be difficult to glaze. I tend to leave my pieces unglazed. I like the way that they look with this matte texture on there. If you do need to do some kind of protective top coat on there, you can probably spray them with something uh, that you don't fire. So some kind of matte or gloss if you need to. Um, cover coat just to keep it clean as it exists in the world. But that is pretty much um, what I like to do with color, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.